What's insane is that people are even worse presenting on Zoom in 2022 now. Ha! How? What's that about? Hey, welcome to Lead Loud. My name is Richard Mulholland. I'm the founder and chief evangelist of Presentation Powerhouse Missing Link. Now, back in February, March 2020, we created a video for you on five tips for better Zoom presentations. <sighs> Look at that brown hair. Just, I miss you. I miss you so much. <sighs> But we did this video and it went really well for us anyway. We had like 183,000 views. The problem is when I was looking at it recently, I thought, uh, those tips were great for 2020. You know, they were right then, but they're no longer right now. So I wanted to update it and share some new tips that I think can make us better at presenting today. And that's what we've done. So join me while I chat to the team and share with you five tips for better Zoom presentations in 2022. And what's more is the team shares a couple of bonus tips at the end. So definitely stick around for that. So let's jump into that Zoom call and check those tips out. All right, welcome everybody. Uh, it's great to see you all on here. Uh, we're going to do a presentation for you today around how to present better, not just have better meetings, but present better on Zoom. If I can ask the admin of the call a favor, please, would you mind uh, sticking me on spotlights just so that everybody can see me? All right. Thanks so much for that. Uh, by the way, that is the first tip that you need to do. That's the pre-tip. If you're presenting and you're not the host, make sure that somebody else spots like you. I always give myself a little sticky note uh, just so that I can remember that that is something that has to be done. And you can use little notes around if you want something that's not necessarily in your uh, uh, speaker notes for your presentation. So where do we start? Well, the first thing I want to chat about is eye contact. You want to, if you want to deliver a better presentation, your audience wants to feel that you're connecting with them, that you're speaking directly to them. Now, how do I get around that? Well, I've got two options. Uh, right now, I'm doing my best to stare at my camera as well as possible. However, if I go to my second camera, this one over here, I've got a bit of a cheat because the cheat is that I have a teleprompter set up and I'm looking directly into that teleprompter and when I'm looking into that teleprompter, I can see the camera right there, but I can see everything I need to see. I can see your beautiful faces. But what I can do is it'll look like I'm looking directly at you. Now, that's the easy way to do it. There is another method you can use. This is a bit of a cheat. Uh, and for most of you, I would suggest that if you want to get some technology, the teleprompter is probably more trouble than it's worth. I would suggest that you consider looking at the little tool called a PlexiCam. Now, a PlexiCam looks a little bit like this. It's a great little tool. What you can do is you just simply pop it onto your computer. You can move it around. This can go up and down. Ah. This can go up and down like this. You can move it around <laughs> and then you move it to where your audience is and you mount your camera on there. You can look directly through it. You can see your audience where they need to be, but your audience sees you maintaining eye contact. But what if you don't want to wait or you don't want to invest in technology at all? Well, there's still an option for you. And I want to illustrate one of the biggest mistakes that people make in order to help you be a little bit better in this regard. If you imagine this is a Zoom screen here and we have everybody on Zoom, most people, what they do when they're ready, they make their screen full. However, let's say we wanted to look down at Francois down there. Well, we want to be looking at him, but your audience would see you looking, you know, down at the corners. So, hey, how are you? Now, it looks like in your mind, you're looking directly at the person where they need to be chatting to them. But of course, to your audience, you've just lost eye contact. So how do I work around this? Well, what I do is when I jump onto Zoom, I do not ever make Zoom fill my screen. I drag it to the smallest possible position at the top. That way I can see almost everybody in gallery view, but what I'm actually seeing is them there, my speaker notes next to it. And if you zoom in, you can kind of just get a sense of what I'm looking at. So I can see where my next slide or my previous slide would be. I can see the team in front of me and I'm able to look at you and maintain a degree of eye contact with no real effort whatsoever. So that's the, the first point, how to maintain eye contact. Now. That's one of our senses. What about the other one? The sense of sound. Because if there's one thing that can happen all the time these days is we can get interrupted. And these little assholes can interrupt us all the time. These little guys are terrible and they can make the worst of a meeting and everybody's apologizing for them. Well, you don't have to. Let me explain to you what I want you to do right now. Everybody can just go and you see that little thing at the bottom that says mute. Next to that, there's a little up arrow. I want you to click on that little up arrow. 
See what's happening there? Now, when you click on that up arrow, you're gonna click on audio settings. When you click on audio settings, boom, what appears? Well, what appears is a small little thing that says suppress background noise. You can click that suppress background noise and then what will happen? It will keep the sound down. For those of you who want a solution, ah, for those of you who want a solution that's a little bit more elegant than that, you're very, very welcome to utilize Crisp. Crisp takes it to a whole new level. If you are in a coffee shop, I highly recommend you look at that. Look, the audio suppression on your voice might make it a little bit worse, but for the average meeting, it's going to be absolutely perfect. Then if you're clapping your hands together, people can't hear the noise. You can actually bang on things if people have been vacuum cleaning next to me, and you will not notice it at all. Oh, and one little tip I want to chat to you about while we're talking about sound, you wanted to unmute. I can see a lot of you are up there muted. One kind of cool thing you can do, now you have to be muted first for this to work. It won't work by default unless you're already on mute at the beginning, but that's the spacebar technique. So all you have to do, I want everybody to go quickly now and just put your finger on spacebar, hold it in, and then come out, and then, and out. Oh. Shake it all about. Now the cool thing about that, what you can do as well, and now you can, once you've done this once, then what you can do is you can just tap spacebar, tap it. Ah, say hello, hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and then you can untap it to go back and then it's a great tool to just stay in mute in a meeting and in fact if you get in the habit of when you want to speak just you're holding the push to touch there's never that you're on mute problem because you always know you're on mute because you're simply pushing your finger to say something so from here i want to chat about another very important thing and that is the next thing for me is about sharing our screens and sharing our presentations now i don't know if any of you have seen the the usual worst way it's kind of one of the these things here. It's like, um, hey guys, sorry, I just want to um, start by sharing my screen. Um, I'm just going to share here quickly. Um, can everybody see my screen? Uh, thanks. Like, come on. Now there has to be a better way to do this. Uh, it turns out there is a imagine you can instead turn around and say, hey, I just want to share my screen quickly and show you some slides. Check this out. Good sharing is caring. And it really, really is. Sharing your slides in a more professional way is just so much better, so much thicker. So how did I do that? Well, it's relatively easy. You can actually follow along and I'll show you as I'm going. So if you go into your Zoom screen, uh, sharing settings, where it says share screen, what will pop up is that little menu that you've seen all the time with all those little screens, as you can see on my screen now. Now, if you see where I'm pointing to my avatar there, up next to basic, there's a thing that says advanced. If you click on advanced, then what happens is you see a second screen and they'll have different settings depending on the version you're running. It'll probably say share your PowerPoint as a background, which by the way, is something cool you should check out. And then you'll see next to it portion of screen sharing. That's what I'm using right now. Now, um, I like portion of screen sharing because it allows me to send less pixels over the internet. So then I'm actually getting a better quality product because I'm not sharing my big, big monitor with everyone. So what happens? When I click that, what would appear is this little green bar. And you can set this up beforehand. So before this call started, I, in my own Zoom room, I set up which portion of my screen I wanted to set up and it preserved it between calls. Now, all you do is you could drag it bigger. You can get a sense of what I'm doing there by seeing that. And when you're ready, I can you know, drag it to size. I don't like to do that with my audience. I just want to demonstrate how it works. But then I can always see what's happening and what my next screen is. Uh, then when I'm ready to go and ready to start speaking, I just get this ready here, like I did with you guys. So I go and I, you know, share, get ready. My share screen menu is now appearing like you saw in the last screenshot. And then when I'm ready to start sharing, I just double click. And as I do that, it appears, my slides are there. My participants can now see the screen and it just works a little bit better, makes it a little bit easier. Uh, the other thing that I'm mindful to do is to try and make sure that I move myself right to below where the camera is as well, to the point that I said earlier. Zoom by default, when you share screen, will move your audience right to the side, and then you end up speaking to them like this. So one of the early on, I simply drag them back to my camera so that I'm able to maintain, maintain eye contact there, and then I can direct you to the sides when I want to. Now, if you want to be ever so slicker, but this is a bit more work. What you can do is you can go into PowerPoint before you start the call when you're setting up. You can enter a screen share mode, a full screen show mode, and then you can look, click at the bottom left, roll over your mouse and click view presenter notes. Your presenter node screen will pop up. And then when you're doing portion of screen sharing, what you're sharing is that. 
So then you're dragging your screen over that one little bit. You can see your next slide. You can see all your speaker notes. You can actually go to where that little pen is and you can annotate as well. You can see a grid of all your screens, share uh, your slides and go and change them that way. And it just makes for a slicker, better experience. The most important thing for me always though is be able to see my next slide. And why is that so important? Well, because the difference between a good and great presenters or between good and great presenters is their ability to segue. There's nothing worse for me than somebody saying, hey, let's go to um, um, the next slide. All right, the next slide is, um, let's just see. Ah, right, tools. No, you wanna be able to build that up. You wanna be able to turn around and say, Hey, and so what is our final tip? Well, our final tip is, or our second to last tip is use the tools. Use the tools. There are so many tools available for you that you can utilize. And these aren't just tools that are inside Zoom. You have to use the tools that are all around you. Tools like your cameras, your lighting, your audio, your presentation, and your set. I call this your claps, camera, lighting, audio, preso set. You know, even the little things like the background of my room, I can... Ah, change the way it looks, create a better look and feel. Come over here again. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, come back over here. I've set up my environment for success. But whether that's just, you know, the way you set up for lighting, that's up to you. But there is a better way of doing that. Now, of course, speaking of tools, you'll have noticed that I have my slide presenter in my hand to allow me to still be in that presentation mode, but also you'll notice my slides. Well, the tool that I'm utilizing to show most of my slides when I wasn't doing a PowerPoint sharing is a tool called Prezi. And there are so many great tools out there that you can use to have a more enhanced experience. There are some tips coming at the end by the team and they'll give you a bit more detail around that. The idea is to give your audience a better experience uh, to make sure your audience feels like this is a show and a presentation. And that leads me to my final tip. And this was a tip that was there from the very, very beginning. And that is, if you are able, please stand and deliver. When you're presenting, get on stage and stand. I understand that nowadays you can all just be sitting and having meetings and things. And that's cool. But you know, when I'm doing a presentation, I want to be standing. I've got one of these cool standing desks. Sometimes what I'll do is even have a bit of theater. If I wanted to sit there, I might have been sitting before. There is a problem, by the way, when you're sitting there. Look how much less screen you take up. And by the way, you should adjust this anyway. You're so diminutive when you present this way. But when I might turn around and be waiting for my client to introduce me, and then when I'm ready to present, say, great, cool, okay, I'm ready to uh, present, maybe get my desk up, <laughs> and then stand with the audience. Ah! Theater, <laughs> I mean, you don't have to be that silly, but it is nice for the audience to know you're standing up there. And one thing I'm always looking for is how much of my screen am I taking up? I wanna feel like a force of nature. So the top knot, I take my fist, uh, again, I'll have set this up beforehand. Just make sure there's just that much. I also don't want to be here, cut off completely. That's not a good look. But what I want to do is just get that look set up for it. And then I want to do my presentation. And when you're presenting online, you do not want to overstay your welcome because you are no longer trying to hold their attention. You're trying to interrupt their distraction. So I guess the final little parting shot that I want to give you when you are presenting is this. When you said what you have to say, leave. Show up, speak up, and shut up. That's it for me. I hope that was helpful for you. Stick around. The team has got some other great tips for you. And the most important thing about presenting always in Zoom or in person is to practice in public. If you found value here, be sure to like the video. Definitely consider subscribing. Uh, we're going to put out new content for you every week. This is going to make you better at presenting, which will give you an unfair advantage over your colleagues and competitors, which, hey, it's never a bad thing. Thanks so much for that, Rich. There was some really, really awesome content in there. I'm Kevin, and my favorite Zoom tip is running polls. Polls is super fantastic because it creates surprise and delight and a massive amount of engagement for your audiences. Now, what type of engagement? The best kind, non-verbal engagement. Now, you can get insights from people of what they're thinking, how they're feeling about anything. You just have to pop it into the poll. Amazing. And the best part, it's so easy to do. You can run it on the fly or you can prep them. I highly recommend you prep them, but all you have to do is pop down to the poll section while you're in your Zoom room and click that button. From there, click create new poll and Bob's your uncle. It says it for you. Super, super easy to run. Now, the topic of lighting within the online meeting space have been discussed to death already, but not enough people are taking action. It's really time to start paying attention to your professional online appearance. Now, keep in mind that the purpose of lighting is not only to eliminate unwanted shadows from your face, but also to make you stand out from the background, making you the focal point of your screen. So here's three quick ways on how to achieve that. Number one, make use of the LCD light. Panel assist light up your entire upper body. Number two, 
place your light vertically, is this will ensure that most of light is concentrated on you and not your background or your surrounding. And number three, place your light slightly higher than your brow to ensure a room of light around your hair and your shoulders to make sure that you are standing out from the background. Hey, so we've noticed that people really don't like turning their video on during a Zoom call or a Zoom presentation. And you can't blame people because the camera quality on laptops and computers these days is just terrible. It's really not flattering, which is why my favorite Zoom tip is using an external camera. You don't need to invest in the really fancy equipment, although if you have the budget, you can. All you need nowadays is just your cell phone. So with a really cool app called Reincubate Camo, it's as simple as downloading the desktop app. You can find a link down in the description below, downloading it on your cellular device. And then you link the two following the very simple steps. And then Bob's your uncle. You should find the camera option down here in your video options on Zoom. It's as simple as that. Hey there, Joshua here. Now, have you ever looked at your camera feed in Zoom and realized that the lighting doesn't look as great as it should, especially if the lighting in the room doesn't suffice? Well, there's a way to virtually improve your lighting, especially if you don't have the means to. Now, this will get you one step closer to looking that much more like a pro in comparison to everybody else. Let me show you how. Now, if you go to the bottom left section of your Zoom window and you click on this little up arrow next to your video toggle option, click on video settings and go to adjust for low light, then you want to set this to manual. This will then allow you to manually increase or decrease the brightness of your video feed. And that will help you look that much better. One of the biggest problems we have when it comes to speaking to an online audience is trying to maintain that online audience engagement. It is so difficult. Now, one way to solve that is to include your audience in your conversation. And you do this by asking them questions. Ask them questions specifically. Use their name. Karen, what did you think about that? There's got to be at least one Karen watching this. <laughs> and then as you continue with your conversation, come back to that specific point that you spoke about with Karen. Thanks for that great so Karen. <laughs> come back to that point. Mention them specifically and the point that they made. So this is just really one way of becoming a lot more engaging and collaborative. And it also really helps to make sure that your meeting or presentation doesn't turn into a podcast.